What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Deli G. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel, and thanks so much for staying tuned to this next episode of The Next Show. Here we go. Deli Deli with the sauce. sauce. All right. So, on this one, on this episode, things of nature to discuss will include some Blue Jay stock. Uh, they just signed George Springer recently, so I'm going to give you guys my take on uh, how that's going to impact the team on and off the field and, uh, you know, some of the other moves uh, they, they need to make. Uh, NFL playoff picks is down to the conference championship games, and uh, there's going to be a couple of good ones. So I'm going to give you guys uh, my predictions, and uh, I guess I'm, I might I might as well uh, throw my uh, Super Bowl predictions out there too. Uh, New York Football Jets. Um, it appears they are um, front runners for Deshaun Watson, and uh, I just read also that uh, Matthew Stafford is going to possibly uh, try and be traded. So I'm guessing the Jets might be in on that as well. We'll touch on a little bit about that. Uh, Patrick Laine was traded for Pierre-Luc Dubois of Columbus in the NHL. We'll get into that. And uh, Conor McGregor. It is late Saturday, January 24th, and I've already seen the fight. And uh, spoiler alert, shout out to Dustin Poirier. You got the job done, buddy. Way to go. Shout out to him. It was a great fight. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, discuss uh, a lot about uh, Connor. Because uh, as you guys uh, may have watched from the previous episode, you know, I didn't think he was really hot shit anyways. And looks like in the end, I was right. What do I know? I'm a casual uh, UFC fan. So, hey, every dog has their day, I guess. All right, guys. But, uh, yeah, so we'll get into all that uh, and much more, whatever, as always, uh, the film time will allow for. But the very first thing I want to say, actually, is um, uh, rest in peace, hammering Hank Aaron. Um, passed away uh, at the age of uh, 86 or 87, uh, I believe. And, uh, you know, not he was he was such a celebrated and polarizing person, not just for what he did on the field, obviously, you know, with breaking the record and all the home runs and hits and everything. But, you know, he was he was there, uh, you know, fighting for social justice issues and things like that, too. So um, obviously he cared about things that were important to him um, off the field as much as on the field. So. Um, you know, rest in peace to, to Hank Aaron. And, uh, you know, um, he leaves behind a great legacy. That's for sure. A great legacy of, uh, you know, longevity, success, and uh, admiration. So good on him. And, uh, you know, let's hope uh, this world continues to, um, you know, lead by his example and, and uh, churn out uh, more people like him. So there we go, guys. Rest in peace, Hank Aaron. Now, staying with um, Major League Baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays, they went out and got themselves an outfielder by the name of uh, George Springer. You may know him from uh, appearances in uh, the Houston Astros franchise. So, I mean, you know, he was involved in that cheating scandal too. So, it's kind of like a catch-22 for me. It's like, yes, he's a winner, but he's also a cheater, and he's an outfielder. So, I don't know, man. I know, um, you know, I guess the, the sons of major leaguers are going to play in the interior, I guess. But uh, um, I, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's a good signing in the sense that, like, you have all these sons of major leaguers and now you brought a guy in who is a true winner and can maybe, you know, show the young guys how it's done and what it takes to win and, you know, give them certain lessons about hitting and hopefully not convince them to try and cheat like they were doing in Houston. But... You know, it's, it's a good signing for, for the players, and I guess you get you get some production out of him, hopefully. Hopefully he doesn't just, you know, become disinterested once he gets to Toronto because, you know, it is Toronto, and it's it's a market that traditionally big-time free agents haven't favored over, you know, Dodgers, Yankees, et cetera, et cetera, Red Sox. But, you know, what the, what the Jays really need to focus on, like, great. You got yourself a name, and you got yourself somebody who can give you some production, and you got yourself a, a winning Wiley vet. That's great. You know, he George Springer takes off all the check marks that you want out of a productive veteran uh, leader presence in, in, in the dugout. However... If you're actually see if you're if you're the Toronto Blue Jays and you're actually serious about winning, go out and get yourself Trevor Bauer. 
go out and get yourself, you know, a guy like Blake Snell or Carrasco, who apparently were, you know, on the trading block, on the trade market. Get yourself some quality pitching because that's what's ultimately going to win you a World Series is quality pitching. This is this is why the Red Sox went out and basically, you know, paid everything they had to go out and get Chris Sale because the guy gets strikeouts and he gets wins. And pitching gets wins. Pitching wins championships. You know, offense puts people in the seats, but – I mean, no fans at the Sky Dome or Dunedin or wherever the heck the Blue Jays are going to play. Tampa, wherever they're going to play. <laughs> so, okay, great. You signed George Springer, but there's nobody that's going to be in the stands, you know, watching him. Awesome. Now, what you want to do to try to actually win is shore up the damn pitching. Which, you know, basically, I mean, the pitching has been solid since David Price was here. And you had the compliment of, of young guys. But it's all just deteriorated to shit now, and I don't even I don't even know I don't even know what we have honestly. I don't even, I, I could not tell you the starting pitching lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays, and that's freaking sad. So I'm 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 pretty like hardcore fan right with the rest of them. You know I'm not I'm not just like a casual baseball observer. My my Dominican heritage could not allow me to be a casual observer of the Toronto Blue Jays. So. We got to we got to do something about pitching, boys, or this George Springer deal will mean absolutely fuck all when you're like 62 and friggin' 62 <laughs> or whatever it is, or when you only win like 30, 40 games. That George Springer deal ain't gonna mean shit. So let's get on pitching, boys, and see what happens from there. All right, so um, here we go. Here we go with the NFL. Awesome divisional round. I picked the Bills. Not a lot of people were giving them a shot. I picked Green Bay. A lot of people were trying to write them off. I picked the Bucks. A lot of people were trying to write them off because, oh, well, actually, no, I didn't pick. No, no, my bad, my bad, my bad. I did not pick the Bucks. I picked the Saints. That was one of the flubs that I had, but I got all the other picks right. Um, yeah, just because, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, yeah, you know, that third time around, yada, yada. But, man, just like Skip Bayless says, if there's one man you cannot count out in a football game, Thomas Edward Patrick Jr., Brady Jr., Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr., that guy, man, oh, my gosh, you know, I just, I was automatically hating him for the longest time. Uh, being a Jets fan, but man, I gotta tell you, man, that guy truly is the GOAT, and he truly has impressed, man. Conference championship games in the AFC and NFC, like what the? And he he literally took a team that was seven and nine last year and took them all the way to the NFC title game, like yo, man, go. And then you and then on the flip side, you see what New England did. They did nothing but suck dick on offense, especially with Cam Newton. Like, that was brutal. But, uh, yeah, you know, now, now you see the effect that uh, a QB has uh, on a team, a good QB. You know, literally. It can, it can literally turn the franchise's fortunes around, which is a great segue. And it leads me to my next point about the New York football Jets. All right, so why am I talking about the New York football Jets? Because, really, I mean, they're really irrelevant. Um, the reason I'm talking about the New York football Jets right now is because apparently, allegedly, they're the number one pick for Deshaun Watson to go to, to leave Houston. Now, it's kind of a shock to me because there are much better options than the New York football Jets. I know they have, you know, the money and the draft capital to support and bring in Deshaun Watson. But, you know, all, 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 all my Jets fans out there. Don't think that Deshaun Watson is going to come in and work his magic with nothing at wide receiver. Nothing. Nothing at wide receiver. Okay? They're going to have to upgrade that position and you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to get themselves a a, a decent running back too, man, cuz the, basically the whole offense outside of maybe what uh, maybe Pearman made a few catches like when Flacco played, because they, you know, they had that chemistry from from their days with Baltimore. I mean, outside of that, man. And I guess, I guess, um, oh, now, now his now his name escapes me. Um, the current quarterback of the New York Football Jets. Well, that that really tells you how irrelevant that guy is, eh? That I, I forget I forget my own QB's name. Wow. Um, 
anyways, uh, yeah, when he he had he had uh, some chemistry with uh, Crowder too. Um, Sam. Sam is definitely his first name. Darnold. Hey, here we go. Darnold had some chemistry with Crowder and whatever, but like again, not enough, obviously. And you got no run game, so there even. Even if we do end up getting Deshaun Watson, there's going to, have to be some major, major changes made to the offense. The offensive line is okay. Uh, they're probably going to be drafting uh, a, a tackle or something or, or a lineman with their uh, second overall pick, I believe, they're going to have in the draft. So they'll, they'll address the issue of, of protection no matter who the quarterback is going to be, which is good. But, again, though, you know, wide receiver, nothing there. Running back, nothing there. So we, we need to shore that up if you're the New York football Jets and, and you're the GM. So that's that's my take on it. Um, hopefully we do land uh, Deshaun Watson and somehow are still able to keep uh, Sam Darnold. If, if that somehow gets worked out, then, uh, wow, that would, be, that would be something else. So, yeah, I mean um, – We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the in the future. And uh, I heard as well that uh, Matthew Stafford uh, may also be available in uh, trade talks. I guess uh, you know him and uh, Lions have agreed to sort of like mutually part ways and allow him to seek a trade partner. So um, Jets might be in on that one too. Either way, I mean, be a significant upgrade over Darnold, who honestly like. I, I, I feel for the guy, and I still think that he can be a legit uh, quarterback in this league. There, you know, people were talking about maybe he should go to San Francisco because, you know, it looks like they're not really happy with what Garoppolo's been giving them. And that would be a very interesting trade. I think, you know, he, he, he'd be pretty good in that, like, West Coast type of uh, offense. Um, but, yeah, man, we, you know, we'll see what happens. If, we, if the New York Jets uh, land to Sean, that'd be a huge coup for the franchise. But... We gotta get we gotta get him some help at, at wide receiver. You know, we we saw what happened. Even even though he was able to work his magic, it's because he had you know Fuller and guys like that. You know what I mean? Working with him, and you know, you saw what happened. So when you took uh, Hopkins away from from uh, Deshaun, so we don't want to be in that uh, similar situation if you're the New York Jets here. So um, yeah. Moving on here, uh, the Jets. <laughs> now to the hockey Jets. Oh, another great segue. Uh, to the hockey Jets of the NHL. So, huge trade. They landed uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois uh, from Columbus uh, in exchange for uh, Jack Roslevic, um and Patrick Laine and uh, some draft picks uh, going the other way, each way as well. But um, I don't know if... <laughs> If you want to say like, if you want to say winner or loser of this trade, I think I think Winnipeg won the trade. Like Roslovic was a healthy scratch, and our I don't even know if he was signed as RFA or something. Scratch, not playing, not signed, and Line A can't play defense. So now you bring in uh, a a true center that definitely has a ceiling of a number two, and and maybe you could fill in at one if you, if your one guy is uh, injured. Shifley, if Shifley gets injured, you know PLD could be an awesome like fill in. Um, solid number two, of course. Um, but yeah, man. And like, now, now you just short up the defense, which uh, was kind of an issue because you didn't know what was going to happen with, um, I think it was uh, Brian Little or uh, one of those guys had some kind of uh, illness or something. So, um, you know, I don't think he was going to come back. I think it is Brian Little. He wasn't going to come back. So now you have depth at center, which you needed. And because, you know, Shifley got hurt in the playoffs or whatever, and they weren't really the same team. Now you got Dev PLD is a, a very good two-way center. And, yeah, you got rid of the headache. That is uh, Patrick Laine. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to score a lot of goals, that's for sure. Yeah, but scoring don't win your championships, bud. You got to play defense. <laughs> you got to be two-way, at least to some degree. So, yeah. Um, if you are going to if, – if I'm going to call a winner, it's going to be the Jets, man. It's going to be the Jets. So, um, And they won big tonight, you know, after they got rid of Laine. So, Obviously, you know, the, the chemistry issues are working out for them now now that he's gotten everything. So there you go, guys. All right, we're getting uh we're getting right up to it on the film here. So but we are on the last topic, and that is one Connor McGregor. I guess I I guess I wanted to save the best for last. You know, coming in as a as a casual UFC fan, I'm like, okay, you know what? Every time you talk shit about Connor, he just comes back and punches a guy in the face. 
And, uh, you know, next thing you know, oh, he, he just won another title. But you know what? Maybe after he uh, fought Khabib and then tried to mess around with Floyd and got his ass whipped, you know, maybe maybe he should have been thinking about, you know, maybe training more instead of, like, posting for pictures and yada yada. And, uh, you know, he thought he could get by on his reputation and talent, but that's that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Poirier, meanwhile, man, that guy was freaking laser focused because he knew. He knew how much he wanted to take down McGregor and what this could do for his career and, uh, you know, his, his uh, championship aspirations. So, yo, man, at the end of the day, the better fighter won, straight up, man. The better fighter and the fighter who took the fight more seriously won, straight up, man, straight up. I ain't going to say any more than that, man. Y'all can hate on that analysis all you want, man, but, again... I called it on the last show, man. I said this guy was falling off a little bit. You know, focusing too much on, on the wrong shit. Trying to experiment with a bunch of stupid shit. And look where it got him. Got his ass knocked the fuck out, TKO, bitch. Second round. Now guess what? That vacated title that you wanted so much, you ain't gonna get it anyway, motherfucker. So that's it, man. Sorry, bud. Better luck next time. Now you have to fucking scrape your ass up from the bottom. And uh, try to build yourself up to even get a sniff of Khabib. Yo, he ain't gonna fuck. <laughs> Khabib ain't even gonna give you a fucking second look now, brother. He's gonna be like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay retired. Because obviously this guy's still a fucking goof. So I don't need to fight him for shit. Night. That's it. And yeah. On that note, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna say goodbye and so long. So yeah, guys. That's all I got for today. Um, stay tuned as always. Uh, keep it locked on my channel. Subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Um, we got lots of uh, NHL 21, PS4 highlights, uh, card breaks, and of course, the next show. So keep it locked here, guys. It is your boy Jelly G here. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for another episode of the next show. Peace.